Hi folks, I've had a few requests to provide some details on the kayak I've been using, so I'm doing this off the lake edition to give everyone a closer look. This is the Lifetime Sport Fisher Kayak. It set me back 550 bucks, and I bought it through Amazon since uh, it wasn't in any of the stores around here. I did get free shipping, so there's that. Uh, this kayak is 10 feet long, which is actually pretty short for a kayak. Most fishing kayaks tend to be 12 to 14 feet or even longer, but I wanted a shorter length to make it a bit easier to transport and to store. Um, the kayak is 36 inches wide across here, uh, which makes it actually a pretty wide kayak. A uh, wider kayak is generally more stable and harder to tip over, which uh, you know, for a man of my size was actually the biggest concern. Uh, another thing besides width that helps make this kayak stable is the shape of the hull. The sport fisher is what's called a tunnel hull. It helps slow the roll a bit when compared to a rounded hull uh, that you might see in like a traditional kayak or like in a canoe. Um, hopefully you can see uh, the keel with the two channels there. Um, Overall, this kayak is rated at 550 pounds maximum weight capacity. Um, I won't go into the details of what that actually means in use, just that it can hold more weight than most kayaks. Uh, and uh, the last important spec on this kayak is that it weighs uh, 60 pounds. Well, you know, actually the company says it weighs 60 pounds, but I'd wager it's closer to 75. This is not a light boat. So, um, those are the general specs, so let's talk features. First off, this is what's called a sit-on-top kayak. As uh, the name implies, you sit on top of the hull instead of inside it like a traditional kayak or sit inside. Um, what this setup does is give you access to the whole deck for easy access to your stuff. The downside is that uh, you will get wet in this kayak, but this is Texas. Getting wet is uh, really more of a blessing. Uh, not a curse. Um, so, uh, you know, a sit on top lets you sit a bit higher uh, than a sit inside, which for fishing, higher is usually better. Um, although, you know, higher seating uh, is also less stable. So it's it's a trade-off. Uh, anyway, uh, one thing most sit on top kayaks have are scupper holes. Uh, these holes, you can see um, them here, um, go all the way through the hull to allow any water that splashes over to wash back down into the uh, water below. However, um, this boat only has two scupper holes. Um, most uh, kayaks, sit on top kayaks have more, um, and these aren't very useful. As you can see, the, the water, um, you know, unless it falls into this little spot here, uh, won't go in there, or there's a lot of water, which obviously then would drain. Um, but I haven't had any issues with deck awash with waves, so I've just kept the scuppers blocked with uh, uh, these little babies, which are called scupper plugs. Um, uh, let's see, the kayak came with a couple uh, already in the holes, and then um, I got these spares um, uh, as well. Okay, so let's uh, go up to the bow and continue the tour. So we're here at the bow, and um, the first thing here is uh, the molded-in carrying handle, which is uh, very useful. I'm glad this is on here. Um, so moving down here a bit, we've got uh, um, the bungee cord here that crosses the deck to hold loose items. This is handy, um, but it's a bit far from the seat to be easily accessible when on the water. So this is kind of you know storage that I don't need to get too much. Um, <clears throat> Now you can see next to it here, each side has multiple footrest positions molded into the deck. Um, these work okay, but I do find that there are times that my heels want to kind of rest between positions and that's not so comfortable. Uh, and as I just mentioned, uh, they catch and keep water away from the scupper holes. <clears throat> Up here, uh, you've got these, uh, these holes. They don't go all the way through, just um, a couple inches down. Not sure what they're designed to do, really, but um, you know, I came up with a use for them that I'll show in a uh, future episode. 
Uh, and then in between the holes here, you have um, another hole here that's um, uh, right next to This is actually a, a water uh, or a cup holder here. Um, but this, this other hole um, is uh, intended to fit a mast for a sail. Yeah, a sail. <laughs> it did not come with a sail, and I'm not eager to try sailing, to be honest. But anyway, uh, then we get to the first of three seats. Yes, actually, this, this kayak is uh, designed for three passengers. Um, I mean, it's uh, really more of a one adult, large adult, one medium adult, one small child, maybe. But um, it's it, it does have three seats. Um you know, but for me, weight is a concern. So it's probably just going to be, you know, me and maybe one other person um, on, on this kayak. Uh, okay, so uh, over here on the side, you can see uh, this is the carrying handle. When I, when I first got this boat, I figured, hey, I'll just, uh, you know, lug it down to the water um, by myself just using this handle. Uh, so <laughs> long story short, the hernia stitches come out in a week. <laughs> okay, so... It wasn't that bad, but this thing is a beast to try to wrangle with just this handle. So uh, I came up with an easier way to get this guy between the truck and the water, which I'll, uh, again, I'll talk about that in a future episode. Um, on the, okay, over on the far side there, you can see uh, the first of three uh, built-in rod holders. Uh, I'll talk more about these when I get back uh, to the other two, which are in, in the back. Um Along the side, you can see these little um, pad eyes every now and then, like with the bungees in the front. Uh, these things are really useful. Um, they have many uses, but the one we're coming to now is the anchor points for the seat backs. Uh, the kayak came with two seat backs, which uh, attach as you see here. Uh, they don't provide tremendous support, uh, especially when you're constantly paddling. But since I do don't do much, you know, long haul paddling these are fine for just sitting there um and uh so anyway this one's set up in the middle seat which is where i sit when i'm out there by myself uh let's see here's uh well, another bottle holder um back on the outside here you can see uh these are uh paddle clips built-in paddle clips uh and there's another set on the far side uh, well, while we're on the subject, the kayak came with two paddles, which uh, is actually a, a pretty good deal. Most kayaks do not come with paddles. Um, paddles can run from, you know, cheap end 30 bucks to 150 bucks a piece. So, well, even more than that sometimes. So, um, you know, even if these are the 30 buck paddles, that's, you know, $60 you don't have to spend. Um, they, uh, they come apart in the middle, as you can see, uh, there's a little spring lock and you can adjust actually them to three angles. Um, I use the middle angle because I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> so, uh, and they also have little drip guards there, which, uh, keep the water from the paddles from going down and getting your hands all wet, which is, you know, handy. So, uh, back to the paddle clips. Um, I use these to hold the paddle for the trip between my truck and the water. When I'm on the lake, <clears throat> I usually just hold the paddle on my lap and haven't noticed a need to put it anywhere else anyway. So, uh, Okay, so moving back, <clears throat> um, here's the third seat. And then we get to the, um, the other two rod holders. So... Now, you know, before I complain about them, let me briefly praise them for doing the job they claim to do. They hold rods, but how they hold rods is the problem. The water line is about, you know, here, uh, and you can see where the reel hangs to. So um, these holders only keep the reels a few inches from the water. I, uh, you know, I don't like that. Um, the one in the front is actually worse because it's lower in place so that your stowed rod interferes with paddling stroke. I mean, um, so you can't even park your rod there for a few minutes when you're, uh, adjusting your position. Just, it's just bad placement. Um, so the rod holders are pretty much a total bust on this model. Uh, I'm working on a solution to salvage the two rear holders, but again, that will have to wait for a future episode. Moving on, back further here, there are a few more pad eyes for tying down stuff. Um, and then on the back of the hull, this is where we get uh, inside the hull itself. This door, 
uh, which I locked before, so I wouldn't struggle with it on camera, has a watertight seal. Uh, let's take a look inside the hull. So, uh, you know, empty space pretty much. Um, you can use that space for storage, but with no bulkhead, uh, whatever you put in there could shift forward and get stuck. I've been careful about putting much in there. It's not useful out on the water anyway, since you can't get to it. But it's nice to have this, um, you know, I do, I do use it, so it's, it's not complete waste. Uh, okay, this is the uh, drain plug um, that allows you to empty the inside in case it gets water in it. I haven't had that problem so far, knock on plastic. Um, so at the stern, uh, there's this curious little hole here. Uh, the kayak is actually made to accommodate a trolling motor. The company sells a mount that attaches here and allows you to putter around without paddling. Now, the mount itself costs 250 bucks, so not a small investment even before the cost of the trolling motor itself. But if you wanted to, you could get motorized on this thing. Um, and then, uh, well, uh, underneath here, there, there's a back grab handle. It's just the depression of the plastic to let you get a grip. Nothing special, but it does work and I use it, so... Um, I guess that's the tour. I think I've covered everything. Um, this is the way it came. No modifications. The paddles, the um, seat backs, the scupper plugs um, all came with it. Um, so for my impressions of this kayak after taking it out um, several times are generally good. Um, you know, there are a few exceptions. Uh, it's not a fast kayak. Generally, wider kayaks are slower, and I expected it um, to be slower. So it's not a huge deal to me. I, you know, I don't go a huge distance. But it, obviously, all things being equal, it'd be better if it were faster. Um, secondly, it doesn't track very well. Meaning, uh, tracking means uh, it it goes straight. So this one is harder to keep straight than kayaks that track well. Um, again, that's uh, length. Uh, the longer the kayak, generally, the better it tracks. This one's a little bit shorter, so it doesn't track very well. Um, <clears throat> and lastly, um, it's not really suited probably for the big waves or white water. So, I mean, you know, on the ocean, probably not the best kayak. But, you know, I don't plan to bring it out there anyway. Um, on the upside, it's uh, really stable. I've never felt like I was going to tip in this thing, um, which, you know, prime concern. Um, it's short enough to transport and store, um, and it can hold not all my weight, but can take more than just me. Um, on the water I've been fishing, I have had nothing but good experiences with this kayak. Um, Lifetime actually makes a non-fishing version of this kayak called the Manta. Uh, the only differences between this fishing model, uh, the Sport Fisher, and the Manta are the rod holders um, and actually in some different color options you know had i known how useless the rod holders were i might have saved myself a few bucks and bought the manta but the basic design is what i wanted so i'm happy um so i guess that's uh, an overview and review uh, i hope you liked it uh let me know if you have any questions in the comments and as always